So we made it to the ring and it is wet. It is wet and miserable and it's been raining most of the day. Uh, we're hoping we're gonna get out fairly soon, get a couple of laps in and just see what it's like. The car itself is running brilliantly. We've got no issues that we can tell. So all being well, in about half an hour, we'll get out on track, do a couple of laps and see where we're at. Oh, it's moist out. And where we were at was a wet, slippy track with areas of standing water and at times, fog. These are some clips from the same lap at the end of episode 156. I've put a card in the corner if you'd like to see the whole thing and what we did prior to coming here. If you've watched that episode, then you already know where this is going, and I'll give you the crib notes when we get there if you haven't. In front at the moment is one of the very few cars we saw on track the entire lap, which is fortunate considering the spray that was coming up. We were pretty much free to make our own way, unbothered by traffic, for well over 90% of the lap. And in short order, not long after passing the old start finish straight and Sabine Schmidt's curve, they indicated right and led us by. A few minutes later we were overtaken by a different car as we came out of Foxhole towards Adenau Forst. Shortly after this, we confirmed some suspicions we had from lap 1. Our brakes are unhappy. This noise is almost certainly high moisture content in the brake fluid. And after driving for a while, it heats up, boils, and ends up releasing pressure on the brakes, causing them to judder through the steering wheel. I convinced myself that this could have been solved with new discs and pads, which is exactly what we had at home in the garage, but we didn't have time to fit. As a result, I'm now kicking myself for not just fitting these while we were back home, and I'm hyper-focusing on this almost certainly being the solution, because it was such an obvious thing we should have done. With the benefit of hindsight, I'm sure the discs and pads weren't actually at fault and it was almost certainly the brake fluid. However, as I mentioned in episode 156, even if we'd opted to change the fluid before we left, we might have been just as stuck as once we got home because then we found out that the bleed screws were starting to round off with even the lightest attempt at trying to loosen them. If we tried to do that over here and swap the brake fluid out, having thought maybe that would be the solution, we'd likely have not been able to drive the car home, certainly if we couldn't tighten it up properly, or worse, stripped it out completely in the caliper. So we just learned to live with it for this trip. We drove slower and we just enjoyed the time on track for what it was. As it happened, super fast laps weren't exactly the order of the day for this trip because alongside me, there were two complete Nürburgring novices. I'd brought along a couple of friends, Emily, who brought her Passat, and John of Mad Scientist Garage on YouTube, who'd flown in the previous day, neither of whom had ever been to the ring before. And this episode of Pedalbox Road Trip is really all about their first experience on the Nürburgring. So, probably a shock to no one, yeah, we checked nothing, and the brakes are kind of bad. But well, the that's not true. We, the, we checked them on road. Right. And they were perfect. They, they were fantastic for driving like you're not. Yeah, like enthusiastic A road, B road driving. Yeah. Absolutely spot on. But if you drive like you're trying to get away from the police, <laughs> they they get a bit wiggly. Yeah. I don't think anyone around here is going to have a set of discs for one of these at any price. <laughs> it's just. I do not think that is the thing. So? So that's going to be a call in the morning to special brakes in Muspath. <laughs> and we'll see what they may or may not have in stock. And then it's just a question of fitting them, which fortunately we brought jacks, we brought tools, we brought everything we need, except actually a tool wrench now I think about it. But we can fix that. The wheels are going to be uh, <laughs> good and tight. Good and tight. Good and tight. It's a German spec, I'm yeah. pretty sure. Unfortunately, on that lap that we just went through, uh, somebody has come off, and it looks like they have bent many a control arm yep. on the back left of their Porsche. It handles so, like a porch now. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so they've, uh, they've closed the track, so we are just trundling back down through the valley, back towards our digs for the evening. Trundling is British for driving slow. He says invoking half a bar of boost. <laughs> So, after putting the GTO to one side, we took the Passat out, with John on the hump seat in the back, 
Emily driving while I tried my hardest to keep her updated on where the track is going next, where she should be slowing down, and when she could let that TDI power rip just a little bit. Look at the chicane. Floor it. You're good. You should be going to go all the way through these on the racing line. So you can see the tyre tracks. Yeah. Uh, Generally follow them. A little bit further left. A little bit further right. And then right hard, left. hard, hard apex over the white line. Yeah. Slow down a bit and then touch the curb right. Touch the curb. Come through a, bit more a little bit wider and then it, cut yep. across and then slow hard brake right right around the apex off by the time you get to here apex uh, in a bit more hold the apex there you go lots of people screw up there yeah just like a straight line through all of these apexes basically and then I want to be hard right on this one only, because it's a long left. Yep, yeah, you've got a long left through. Coming out to the brakes. And you want to go left, 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 assuming you've got no one behind you. Don't know what it is. And dab on the brakes, turn in. The bolster on these seats is not good. <laughs> <laughs> and then through, right scoop through it. And then flat. <laughs> Flat through, flat over the crest, nice straight line, don't turn until you're over the crest and down the other side. Yeah, you're good. Apex through there, uh, left of the track. Straight line the apexes, you've got one, two, it sets you up for the third, just believe that it's there. <clears throat> Again, straight through. When you get past this apex, straight line on the brakes towards the next one. So, brake, 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 off the brakes, through the compression of foxhole, brake, 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 to the end of the curbs, turn in, Still apex, and then, yep, that's good. Oh, we've been too Stick. early on my end there. Yep, so. Now, I'm not an instructor. You shouldn't take my advice on any line on any track, much less this one. My goal here is to make sure whoever I'm in the car with isn't surprised by a wall of rock hiding behind a tree just because they knew where they were, and suddenly, they're mirrors deep into the Armco, staring down a big repair bill. Your car will likely be wildly different, especially because we're fairly lucky here in having virtually no traffic to speak of, and to make use of almost whatever line we want. Couple that with weather that could charitably be called changeable in this region, and whatever advice I'm giving here is almost certainly useless to anyone else. This is my disclaimer, I am an idiot, and frequently say things that mean nothing to most people. Buyer beware, your mileage may vary, terms and conditions apply, see box before opening. Keep it wide, keep it wide, keep it wide, keep it wide. Now turn in. You want to apex all the way down here so in a front wheel drive. So you come through this, you apex this one, Let it and then come out. So you're entering a speed limited part, which is really only if you crash that so they have more to throw at you. You can apex straight down here. There's the apex for the corner mark there. And turn in roughly where, yeah, where the graffiti is. Apex is through there, wide, 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 on the way out, back in again. This is like a very small Eau Rouge. <laughs> yep. Turn in at the end of the oh, not, red white there. Out. No, no, you were about right. Okay. Apex there, and then let it bleed out wide, wide, wide. Are you feeling like a carousel? Straight line through here. You want to dip in at the third block, and you want to be doing about 30 mile an hour. So follow him in, left hand, left wheel in, go. Nice. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> apex, double apex, straight round. The only thing I want to happen here is to overtake that S2000 in a diesel Passat state. <laughs> apex, brake, left, 
apex no, through he's, there. He's, he's laying over. him over, yeah. <laughs> Send it. Right, on the brakes a little bit, because we're on the wrong side of the line for this, so through, nice and tight. Clear. Apex clear. exactly where you think. Right through hard, hold it, hold it, hold it. Too Out to the left. <laughs> Aim for the 151, and then turn in at the 151. Nice, there's your apex. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Nice and gentle. And just ride this curb round. There you go. Right. Turn in. Oh, I've messed the apex there, apex, but that's okay, fine. that's fine. Hold it, hold it, hold it. It's a double apex corner anyway, so you hit this one here. Straight line brake to the apex on the right-hand side. There's your apex. Straight down here, brake before the end of the curbing on the left. And turn in. Yep. And then apex through here, perfect. Straight line right down to the left side of the track at the bottom. Brakes now. Brakes when you land. Turn in. <laughs> apex on your way out. Blind apex to the left. Over to the right, aim for the tower. Brakes, turn in. You want to go straight down the left the side of the track. Up. Break through the compression. Believe that there is an apex. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> Brakes, turn in. Through mini carousel. And then it's amazing what having a car with working brakes and exactly the right amount of power can do. Not too much for the conditions, but enough to keep up and indeed overtake folks who were very obviously having to hold back from the true potential of their cars. The Passat with Emily at the helm eventually clocked up a solid sub 11 minute lap, albeit a couple of days later, after a few more laps as both driver and passenger, and in the balmy summer sun. For reference, the best I got out of the GTO this trip was mid-11s in the dry with that brake problem. This is the gantry. Yep. 13, 14. And you overtook someone. <laughs> After some heavy rain stopped laps for a while, we went down to Adenau to watch near the bridge as cars started going back out on track, and as the surface dried, the racing line started to appear, and inevitably, confidence begins to grow behind the wheel. It wasn't long before someone overcooked the corner coming into the bridge and hit the wall. This corner catches out a surprising number of people, including me on this trip on the first lap as I was feeling out the brake issues on the GTO. The entry to the bridge follows a reasonable length run downhill from one of, if not the slowest corners on the track at the Seafen. Because of this, there's an impetus to get back up to speed, and the downhill exit leading towards Abnau Bridge makes this very easy to do so in any given car compared to approaching the bridge on a flatter gradient. Left-hander into the bridge is fairly tight, it turns about 80 degrees from the approach straight, and on the outside there's virtually no runoff. As you can see from this rover for comparison, there's little more than 8 or so feet from the far edge of the curbing, which is itself a bump of at least 4 inches from track level, which will unsettle the car, to the big, grey, unforgiving wall. This is one of the few places on the track where you can actually get a good view of a car being recovered, lifted onto the bongard, and taken away. You can see with the fairly narrow nature of this section of track, generally there isn't a lot of room to work. Unfortunately, or unfortunately, depending on your perspective, happened right next to the old midway entrance exit onto the track. That meant the recovery truck can get here quickly, and it means it doesn't have far to travel to get back off the track. I cannot believe I'm doing this. <laughs> I'm on the freaking Nurburgring. Yeah, you're good. You can move across a little bit. Right, on the brakes. Just nice and gentle. John's really been thrown in the deep end here. He spent less than an hour behind the wheel, mostly due to me trying to blindly feel out the problem with the brakes, which I inevitably didn't. So he's sitting on the unfamiliar side of a car he's barely spent any time in. It's a manual, which he's having to shift with the wrong hand, since in the US, he'd be using his right hand for the shifter, not the left. 
The brakes are functional, but far from optimal, and just to top it all off, it's raining. Brakes. <clears throat> yeah, you're fine. If the brakes between the apexes, yep. That's it. Once again, I'm not so much coaching for speed here, I'm just looking for surprise trees, mountains, corners ahead, and most of all, anything appearing behind us at pace that we can try and avoid getting in the way of. Yep, that's good. And then just give it a little bit, and then just come off. And then follow it through. That's your apex. Fiddlebacker Ho is the first real respite from tackling corner after corner since Hoan Rain chicane just before the old start finish straight, which was only two minutes ago. That may not feel like much time has passed, but it's worth remembering that they're entire circuits which take less time on your average track day, and they have fewer corners to boot. There's a hundred more apexes and ten more miles ahead, and the look on John's face really says it all. A little bit on the power, not, not too much, just like neutral position to just keep it alive. I ran next to the windscreen just before this lap, but you really can't tell we did a damn thing from this point of view. The rain on the screen looks really bad, but it's really just being exacerbated by the camera being so close to the glass. Visibility was actually much better at the time in this fine rain, but I'll admit, the video really does make it look pretty bad. Big long apex that one. Now, this fourth. Short shift this, yeah. Because you basically get a straight line between the apexes. It'll set you up for the next apex over the crest. And then break between these two apexes just because of the weather. Normally you wouldn't. Mm -hmm. And then give it a little bit more after this apex. More break? Breaks, yeah. Oh yeah, okay. And then just a bit more through the compression because you'll, you'll get extra traction through there. And then turn in at the end of the curve on your right. Find the apex, third gear. Hang out left. Go to the right, there you go. Right, late, late, late. Right, and hang, hang right. So still third gear, keep right, keep right, keep right, keep right, keep right, and now turn in. Oh god. Oh. Yeah, standard. Saved it. Right hand. So on the brakes, late apex, late, 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 late turn in, late turn in, late turn in. There you go, now turn in. And there's your apex. Damn. And it's a little bit of third and then off again. Don't need fourth on the brakes, aiming for the orange, and then turn in at the beginning of the kerb, and you'll see your, out the, there's your apex, straight line, it passes to the 110 marker, left a little bit, middle of the track, so this is miss, of miss, hit, miss, so you want to miss this apex, hit this apex, and then reel it off to the left a little bit, and you just miss the 112 on there. So, come out to the left-hand side of the track, leave it in third, and on the brakes, across to the apex on the right, uh, your second gear, more brakes, alright, to the inside line, just to make sure, sorry about that, that's alright, line just powered off, so, switch to yours out front, alright, on the brakes, yep, brakes, 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 that's fine, turn in, Yep, through the eighth. hold left to the end of the curb, turn in. Yep, power third's fine. Up the hill, you might as well hang right, you're not carrying too much speed to go left. Left, left, left. left. You want the apex and you want to take a nice wide entry into Passat. So it's a long apex. So there's the start bit, flubbed it. And you keep going, and then there's the double. And you back out. So third gear when you get and just hold it in third. Yep, that'll do. And then dab on the brakes. You want to come down plenty and you want to dip it, uh, slow down a bit more. And you're good. Carousel's a hell of a thing. And then apex through here. Uh, yeah, break in a straight line towards the next apex. through, a little bit of power out, um, brakes at the graffiti and then 
turn in at the end of the curve. Yep, that's good. Driver brakes. Yep, you're good. And then apex straight line between all these. Driver brake before the crest. Yep, lift. Driver brake in the compression. Turn in. left and then dab on the brakes yep too much no it was fine and then yeah just like hold it around because you got someone on your left coming through so you might as well just hug all the apexes through here and there's not a lot to really run out I guess. Yeah, because you've now driven the Nurburgring. And PB didn't crash. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Didn't crash, virtually no incidents, a little bit of rain, not too much, and a very, very sodden track. Like, not rivers of water, but mm -hmm. this was definitely no, well beyond mildly moist. I kind of am glad the weather is sabotaging me a little. It, it gives you a nice, like, safety confidence factor of, no, 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 I need to not be dumb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh, the car is sliding, but... <laughs> yeah. But the tires are hot, and this thing will actually oversteer if you give it some. Yeah. This is a really fun car to drive. Like, I... You're not going to see very many import cars of any... Import. <laughs> you're not going to see very many non-domestic American cars on my channel ever. I would own one of these. This is a great driver's car. So that's it. We've got a whole list of things that we need to fix on the car now, but we did get some better laps in during the rest of the weekend. We only got a few more really clean laps in either car. In the end, the Passat was the faster of the two at round about 10.30 with M driving, and the GTO clocked up a respectable 11.30, all things considered. Well, that is our time at the Nürburgring over. The sun has come out on our last day, just as typical as you would expect. We're about to jump in that car, not the one that just went by me, and head back to the UK. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Hopefully you'll see more of this car. If you'd like to, you can subscribe, check out the merch at shop.pedalbox.show, and you can support us on building the cars at patreon.com forward slash pedalboxshow. Thanks very much again. We'll see you later.